This is a brief introduction to the Hebrew textual apparatus resources available in Lagos 5, Part 2. In Part 1, I introduced you to all the textual critical resources that are currently available in Lagos 5. This tutorial will show you how to utilize those resources that were mentioned in that presentation. One resource that I did not bring up in Part 1 is the Net Bible. Even though it's an English version translation, it contains a number of notes that are very helpful for readers of the Bible. So they have TN or textual notes, they also have SN or subject notes, but they also contain what are called TC notes or textual critical notes. So for example, here in Ruth chapter 1 and verses 114, notice a footnote number 45. If I mouse over that, it brings up a textual critical note, a TC note, where it talks about the Septuagint and its reading. And of course, I have it over here as a separate resource, so you can see it perhaps in more detail. So here it says that the Septuagint adds, and she returned to her people, and they give reference to the today's English version that also seems to follow along with the Septuagint reading. And then they give a much fuller description of what the issue is, and perhaps a a value judgment as to what is going on is the discrepancies between the Masoretic text and the Septuagint. And if you read through, you basically say it could have been uh, some type of, of influence of Homo Teleton or Homo Arcton, and uh, those are the possibilities as to why the Septuagint reading is the way that it is. Uh, so that is actually a very accessible tool to be able to access the textual critical issues of the Bible and to do so in a way that does give explanation as to what the issue is and perhaps a possible solution for that. So for many people, this will be a very valuable tool to be able to look at the textual critical issues of the Bible, even though it's only for an English Bible. It does give very full description of the variance between the different versions. But I want to move on to the Hebrew Bibles and the resources that it has. And so the main uh, textual apparatus Bible that is available in Lagos 5 is part of the German Bible Society package, the BHS SESB. BHS stands for Biblia Hebraica Stuttgartensia, and the SESB stands for Stuttgart Electronic Study Bible. Uh, this is the uh, Hebrew Bible that contains the full textual apparatus uh, for all of the Old Testament books. So if you take a look at this uh, Hebrew Bible as compared to like the Lexham Hebrew Bible or the Afat, the Lexham Hebrew Bible contains none of the uh, apparatus notes. The Afat only contains the renderings of the Kathiv Karay. So you'll need a resource like the SESB BHS version to be able to do textual critical work within Lagos Bible software. So here, once again, it's Ruth chapter 1, and we're looking at verse 1. And notice here we have these uh, A uh, notations, and that uh, refers to textual apparatus notes. And so if you mouse over it, you once again see the pop-up that contains the information. Of course, it also is contained in a separate uh, resource that you can have as a side panel so that you can uh, kind of have them scrolling. So notice I have them linked A and A. So if I scroll to any other uh, book of the Bible or verse of the Hebrew Bible, I can see the textual apparatus notes uh, running alongside it. But let's take a look at the types of things that the textual apparatus gives to us in the BHS SCSB Bible. So if we take a look, it says looking at uh, Ruth 1.1 and this A to A section, this little phrase right here. Basically what it's doing is letting us know what the versions and the variants are. So one thing that's very nice about the version uh, in Lagos is that you have the ability to mouse over any of the symbols and it will tell you in a pop-up window what that symbol refers to. Uh, so you don't uh, have to memorize a whole lot of these uh, sigla and abbreviations. So for instance, this note is telling us that the uh, original Greek text, or the Septuagint, has a reading of entokrinane, which is a infinitive prepositional phrase. And uh, what the editors of the apparatus are surmising is that perhaps the Septuagint translators were working off of a Hebrew manuscript that perhaps would have had the bait, represented of course by the preposition N, uh, that would be uh, on the infinitive form in the Hebrew Bible. 
And of course, uh, there is no Hebrew text that has that. It's just saying that if they were to reconstruct what the Hebrew text would have been uh, had uh, they had it, it would perhaps have contained the bait on the infinitive form. And so that's the type of uh, note uh, information that we get in the apparatus. Notice we have a semicolon, which means that we're talking about a different voice or different version uh, that also has uh, uh, something to add to this discussion. And so we look at the S symbol, and that stands for the Syriac. And uh, what they're basically surmising there, the editors, is that this infinitive is omitted, and that's what OM uh, o stands for, is omitted altogether. And so the reading would be Wayahi, Bame, skip over this, and it would be Hashopatim, and it was in the days of the judges, leaving out the infinitive form. So that would be what the Septuagint and the Syriac would add to uh, the discussion in terms of uh, what the text uh, in the Hebrew might have been like if we had the Hebrew manuscripts that they were working off in their translation. Notice we have the double bars, which means we're referring on to a second textual critical note within that same verse. And sure enough, if we look at the end of verse 1, we see another textual variant that is discussed in the B note. And this is this phrase, Ushane uh, Banav. And uh, this is, and two of his sons. And what the uh, editors are saying in this note is that the Septuagint along with the Syriac, which again closely follows the Septuagint readings in uh, most texts, is that they are surmising that that omitted the number two uh, in, their, uh, in the manuscripts that they would have been looking at in their translation. So this would then be reading he and his wife and his sons, not he and his wife and two of his sons. And so that's the type of notation that you get here. And of course, then you see all of the other uh, textual apparatus notes that go along with through chapter one. So that's the type of information and how to navigate the textual apparatus of the BHS SESB. Well, let's talk a little bit about the other uh, Hebrew Bible that does have the apparatus, and that's the BHQ. First of all, it is not a completely uh, done Hebrew Bible. It only has currently seven uh, books of the Bible that are available in Lagos version 5, Deuteronomy, Ruth, Song of Solomon, Ecclesiastes, Lamentations, Esther, Ezra, and Nehemiah. Uh, however, uh, Proverbs and Minor Prophets have been completed, uh, but as soon as they have them in Lagos 5 format, uh, that will be available as a free download uh, to people who have already purchased the Biblia Hebraica Quinta. So hopefully that should be coming soon. So this is, again, uh, just like the BHS SESB, uh, contains the textual apparatus uh, in situ along with the Hebrew text. And once again, you can do the same like the BHS SESB, and that is mouse over the uh, small letter A, uh, et cetera, and you get the pop-up window of that. Now, the BHQ is a different editorial team, and they give different sets of notes. So let's compare what we learned with the BHQ with what we saw in the BHS. So once again, if we mouse over uh, this, they give uh, a little bit more fuller description over here. What they have is this phrase here, which is the same in the Hebrew Masoretic text. And what they say is that the uh, Qumran manuscripts, uh, cave number four, the Ruth manuscript, the first part, uh, the first uh, version, uh, does agree with the Masoretic text. Also what they say is the G, which stands for Old Greek, and again, notice it's a different symbol than the Septuagint symbol that was in SESB. G stands for Greek. And what they're saying here is that uh, there are a couple of Greek Septuagint manuscripts that also follow the Masoretic text reading, along with the Vulgate and the Targums, represented by V and T. And what they're saying is now with this line is that now we have a, another variant uh, to discuss, and that is the Septuagint, the Old Greek, uh, probably up here were some of the manuscripts, but the main Septuagint manuscripts have this reading, ento crinaintus, crites. And basically what they're surmising is, is that the uh, N is included uh, in uh, the uh, Septuagint, so they're surmising that the bait would have been added onto the infinitive form here. And uh, that was actually a little bit more fuller uh, description in the, in the SESB critical apparatus. 
And then as a separate, uh, another variant or voice to listen to is the Syriac. And basically uh, they're going into a discussion basically saying that because of perhaps some of the more uh, challenging syntactical construction here uh, with the infinitive and the uh, noun or participial form of judges, uh, we are dealing with some type of smoothing out of some syntactical difficulty. One thing that is uh, a little bit of an added benefit with the BHQ apparatus is that sometimes with these kind of embellished pluses, you get a little bit more of description that is much more fuller and complete in its discussion. So here in this pop-up window, it brings up the Anchor Bible commentary discussion from uh, the Book of Ruth by Campbell, and uh, he talks about uh, this reading a little bit more in detail. So you have much more uh, detail and information for, to work through as you try to decide uh, what the best reading is for Ruth chapter 1 and verse 1. Now, along with the uh, traditional uh, editorial notes, we also have some things that are available in the BHQ that are not available, though, in the SESB. And let's point these out. Uh, these are these little uh, right angles and left angles uh, that show different uh, Masoretic markings that were in the margin of the manuscripts there. And so, for instance, uh, here in Bime, uh, we have this uh, uh, angle notation. And if I mouse over it, notice it brings up a letter He with a dot over it. And that's signifying that this particular construction, according to the Masoretes, uh, they determine appeared five times. And that's the He is, stands for a numeral. And so Aleph is. Uh, again, in the numerical system, Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Dalet, He. Uh, he is the fifth letter, and so this construction occurs five times. And uh, so that's a type of note. Uh, they do not use the letter Aleph for one. Uh, they use the uh, Lamed, and so Lamed stands uh, for only one occurrence. So this last word here in Ruth 1.1, 1, 1, uh, according to the Masoretic uh, noting, refer is uh, only used in this particular spelling and accenting only one time in all of the Hebrew Bible. And so even though, of course, sons occurs uh, many different times, but in this particular form, it only occurs once. And uh, so that's uh, the, uh, with this accenting uh, markings. And so that's the type of notes that they would give there. Uh, so it also gives the Masora Magna notes. And so if we click on that, uh, we have a little bit more fuller description here. And basically what they're saying is with this particular phrase, Wayahi Ra'av Ba'aretz, is that if we take a look at it, they're basically saying that there's two verses, unusual and unique in the Hebrew Bible, that phrase I just read, twice with these uh, words and accents. And that is occurring in Genesis chapter 12 and verse 10, of course referring to the famine and the uh, time when Abraham first went to the land of Canaan. And of course here in Ruth chapter 1, uh, dealing with the situation of Boaz uh, in our, uh, Abimelech, uh, not Abimelech, but uh, Elimelech here in Ruth chapter 1. And so once again that uh, embellished plus gives you additional information to help you process these kind of things. Now, uh, let's take a look, though, at what would be traditionally what you would look at if you were looking at a hard uh, print copy of the BHS. So here's an example of a sample page using Brotsman's book, uh, since we don't have uh, exactly the layout of what it would look like in a BHS printed Bible. And so here's a sample page of what it would look like from the BHS. And once again, you have the Hebrew text, uh, you have the Masora Parva here on the right. That's what's uh, represented in the D. We have the Masora Magna notations here, and then uh, some more textual critical uh, notations here. So let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, what uh, would be in the Masora Magna. Uh, Masora Magna is part of a, a resource called the Masora Gidala, and that is a separate resource that has to be purchased if you wish to have it within Lagos version 5. You can buy it as part of the BHS helps package, or you can actually buy it as a standalone resource. Uh, this is a, a resource uh, edited by Gerhard Weil, and uh, he has uh, put together uh, the in a separate volume all of the Masora Magna notes. So for instance, let's take a look at one here from Numbers chapter 12. 
In Numbers chapter 12, and that's what this uh, 12 stands for, beginning the 12th chapter, there's Masora Magna note number 904. And so uh, the print Bible does not give you what the Masora Magna 904 note uh, entry uh, information is. That's why you have to go to Masora Get a Lot to be able to get that information. So here, uh, once we look at the Man Masora Magna 904 information, uh, we see here what they give. And what they're noticing here is that this phrase, this noun, Miriam, with the conjunction, occurs three times. That's the Gimo, Aleph, Beit, Gimo. That occurs three times in the Hebrew Bible. We're not saying that Miriam only uh, is referred to three times, but Miriam with the conjunction, uh, this particular conjunction, uh, is used three times in all of the Hebrew Bible. And the Masora, uh, Masora Magna note, what it does in the full entry is give you where those three occurrences are. So Numbers 12.5, the verse under question here, uh, right here, this U Miriam, and then Micah 6.4, and 1 Chronicles 5.29 are all the places in all of the Hebrew Bible where Miriam has the Shura conjunction uh, at the beginning of it. So that's an example of what you get with the Masora Gidalah, and if you uh, are able to have that resource, you're able to access the information in the Masora Magna. This ends our tutorial for the textual critical apparatus and how to use it in Lagos version 5.